our goal is to take the three tables and use the append three grade tables function, open parentheses. We'll highlight the first, comma, the second, comma, the third. And when I close parentheses and hit Enter, I get the field names at the tops and all the records appended. Now this is the crazy array formula we're going to have to create. So be warned, if you love advanced array formula tricks, this is the video for you. Now our online Excel team, as always, is awesome. That new intro came from Gert, also known as the Excel ear. And all the tricks that we're going to see in this video came from CRGR0912 in the comments below Excel Magic Trick 1706. I'm lucky to be on such an awesome team. Now, anytime you take three arrays or any number of arrays and append them, you usually want to use Power Query. But for the rare occasion that you want to do it with a formula, then we have to go through a lot of extra effort. Now, we'll create the formula in the spreadsheet so we can see all the elements. Then we'll use let and lambda. Now, the first thing we have to do is count how many rows there are in each one of the tables. Then figure out the total number of rows. And then from that number of rows 19, we need to create this sequence. But we're going to add 1, because ultimately there's going to be a header row also. We're also going to need to count the number of columns. There's exactly two columns in all three tables. We're going to need to sum the number of rows in the first two, because somehow we have to know when we're past that, where are we going to place the last table. And then this is the sequence. 1, 2 for columns. Now, the most important thing I took away from CRGR's comment is that anytime we have tables like this that we want to append, there's not a direct way to simply take this table, put it under here, and then that one under there. Really, what we need to do is convert this four row by two column table to a 20 row by two column table. And we actually have to do that for all three tables. Once we have the same dimension for all three, then we can use a lookup function like ifs and place them based on the position in the row sequence. So before we come over here, I'm, I want to look at the index function, because this is the whole trick of creating from this teeny table to a much bigger table. Now, the array we're going to look up is whatever size that is, comma. And then the number of rows. Well, if we give it a function argument array operation, which says, hey, give me 1 all the way to 20, well, there are only four rows, so all the rest will be errors, comma. Then we do a function argument array operation and say, also get those two columns. Now, when I close parentheses sure. and hit Enter, there's our 20 rows by two columns table. Now, actually, this is not in the right position because we need a header row. So really what we need to do is amend this. And for all three of our tables, we're going to amend and place that number one, which means the first row, in the correct location. So for this one, since it's supposed to be in the second row, I simply subtract one, which is the header row. Now, F2, let's look. Right there, F9, you can see it starts with a 0. Now, that 0 will force index to pull the first row as a duplicate. But then the subsequent 1 is in the second position, which pulls the first row of that table into the second position in this array of row numbers. And that's the whole trick, getting that number 1 in the right position to place your table. Now, when we get to this table right here, we're going to have to subtract the correct amount so that that 1 actually appears in the 6th position. Control Z. Now, there's a problem because there's a duplicate. But it won't be a problem because when we use the ifs, the first thing we'll pull is the header row. And then when we pull this full table, the header row will already be in place. So that will be hidden. If we use the same idea over here for index, we're looking that up, comma. And we need the numbers 1 to 20. But very carefully, I need to subtract. 
however many rows are in the first, minus 1, comma, and then we'll get our columns. And if we look at row number, F9, there's the trick. It's that 1. And if you read CRGR's comment, he called all of these ghosts because they're there as placeholders. We're really after moving that 1 to the correct location. Control-Z. And now That's when I hit Enter, value. that is looking awesome. That one won't appear because this table right here will already have been pulled by the ifs on top of that record. But all of these will show. And then finally, equals index. We're going to look this up. It's got the wrong number of rows, but no problem. The row number argument comes to the rescue. We're going to put in that sequence of row numbers minus whatever the total is from the first two tables. Minus 1. If I F9, that is amazing. That 1 is exactly in the correct location. And there's a bunch of ghosts. Control-Z, comma. And so now when I close parentheses, now all three tables have the same dimension. So we can use the ifs function and pick out the right row to place our table. So over here, we'll say ifs. That Sequence right there is equal to 1, comma. Then we'll just hard code this in. And one thing about this is we're going to assume we always get names and grades. So we're going to hard code it in in array syntax, open curly bracket, names in double quotes. We want this to go over a column, so we use comma, and then grade in double quotes, and then end curly brackets. Let's look what we have so far. Remember, that's 20 rows. So now we get the first and a bunch of errors. All right, now we continue on, comma, when that whole sequence right there is less than or equal to the count of the first one, plus 1 for the header row. And if I look at that, F9, there's all the true values that I need to pull the first table, Control-Z comma, and we already have it over here. So we pull that, close parentheses. Because we pulled the field names first, it's on top. So it covers up that, and then the remaining records show. F2, comma. We need the full sequence. And I want to pull the third array to the bottom. So when it's greater than the first nine, that's the total for the first two tables, plus 1 comma, and then please give me this table here. Close parentheses, Names. Control Enter. That is looking awesome, F2. And then because we're using ifs, comma, I need to put a true here to say, hey, just take this last thing as the default, comma. And there's the default, each table being taken one after the other. And of course, that row will be hidden close parentheses, Names. and there's our full append. Now I'm going to delete these names. And I already have pre-formatted this. I'll copy this, or cut Control-X, and then write in the top cell Control-V. Now I made an error back in this formula right here. When we subtracted from our array of row numbers, I subtracted the total from table number 3 when I really wanted the sum of the first two. I need to subtract 9. So when I edit that and fix it, now the last record, instead of being Lavona, will properly be Athena. When I hit Enter, now we have the first four from this table right here, the next five from this table right here, and the proper 10 names, including the last one from this table. Now the next step is to use the let function and then the lambda function. Now I have links to the details about let and lambda at the end of this video. I've already created it. But we want to use let because some of the formula elements like this one here we used over and over. So let allows you to name a variable. There's array 1. There's our input from the spreadsheet. We do the same thing. There's variable number 2, 3. And 4, that's where we create the field names or column headers at the top. And then all of these calculations here. We don't want to do them in the spreadsheet. We want to do them inside a function. So we get the number of columns. And for each one of the tables, we calculate the number of rows, 
There's three variables. And then we need the total number of rows. So we use the sum function to add those three variables. And then we need the total for the first two tables. We calculate our sequence for columns, sequence for rows. And there's the ifs function, just as we did over here in the spreadsheet. But now we're doing variables. Once you calculate your let, without the equal sign, I'm going to copy this. And we want a reusable function, so we use the amazing lambda function. Now it needs parameters, and the only one, two, three inputs we have are those three different arrays. So I'm going to define or name the first parameter a, comma, the second one b, comma, and the third array input is c, comma. In calculation, this is where I control v. Very carefully at the end, I'm going to close parentheses. And remember, let is using a variable, oh, but the input is coming from the spreadsheet. And I don't want it from the spreadsheet. I want it from the a parameter when the person uses this function. So let has a variable, but now the input for that variable is a. That means it's coming from lambda. Remember, lambda only has three arguments. We'll do the same thing here, b. And that one is C. And that is what we're going to copy and paste up into the defined name manager. Now I'm going to copy this, but I want to test it. And since this is a function, we can just take that function, open parentheses, and test it right here by putting one, two, three arrays, close parentheses, and Names. enter. So it looks like it's working. To open up the Name Manager, I'm going to use Control F3. We say New, the name, something that's useful to you or the user, because they're going to see that in the dropdown as a new function. And down in Refers, very carefully, I highlight everything, Delete, Control V. And we want to leave a comment, because this comment will show up in the screen tip and help the person that is using this function. All right, so append three grade tables, each with student name and grade columns. Now I'm going to click OK, click Close, and we can test it. As soon as I type AP, I see my function. And right here, there's our screen tip. Now I'm going to hit Tab, open parentheses. And we can do these tables in any order we want. When I enter them as three arguments, close parentheses, nice. that is amazing. Now we get some new data, and we want to use it again. No problem, open parentheses. One, two, three arguments, close parentheses, nice. and that is amazing. All right, so define name lambda function. There's defining the lambda. We want to use let because we have repeating variables. And really, the most important thing in this video is that amazing trick with index to go from various size tables into three tables, all with the same dimensions, so we can use them in the ifs function. All right, it's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Gert for that new intro and CRGR0912 for the amazing advanced array formula tricks. All right, we'll see you next video.